what I want to do in this video is introduce you to what I think is one of the uh, neatest ideas in computer science, and that is recursion. So the way that we've defined this factorial function in the last few videos is actually an iterative definition. We are iterating through different v values for this variable i, and then we're essentially taking those values, adding one, then multiplying those times our original product. And when we keep iterating through all of that, our eventual product has all of the values from 1 through the number multiplied by each other, and they're all sitting in this variable product. What I'm going to do here is rewrite this program. What's cool about uh, uh, functions, I'm going to rewrite this function. What's cool about functions are this function, we just say, look, it returns a factorial of a number. We don't care how this is actually written. And so anything that's using this function call, no matter how I implement it, as long as I implement it correctly, it shouldn't worry about it. So as long as I implement this, the insides, the guts of this function right, even if I could do it in a very different way, it shouldn't affect the behavior of any of the functions that call it. So let's let's go ahead and try to define this function recursively. And I think it's you're going to find this slightly fascinating. So I'm going to do it a little bit different. We're going to get put some conditionals in here as well. So I'm going to say, so it's almost, in some ways, recursion is really deep and complicated. And on some levels, it's way simpler than anything else. So let me just put all of this stuff down there. So I'm going to say, look, if the number, you, you always want to think about a base case. What's the situation where if, if kind of the, 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 the nugget or the smallest values we can put into for number that will give us a, a decent response? So we'll say, look, if, if number, if number is, let's say if it's less than or equal to 1, so if it's less than or equal to 1, let's just return. Well, then it's factorial. Let's just return 1, especially if we want to have it have the same behavior as the old function. The old function, regardless of whether we put a 1 there or a 0 there, actually, even if we put a negative 1 or negative 2 there, it always gave us the factorial being equal to 1. So that's exactly what we're doing over here. We're returning 1 if the number is less than 1. And this also defines our base case. I'll, I can even label it here. So let me label. This is our, this is our base case. And you'll see what I mean for a second by a base case. And this is the, what I'm about to do now. This is the really exciting part about recursion. If the number, if the number is not less than or equal to one, so I could write L if. So this, or maybe I'll just write else actually. So if the number is not less than or equal to one, I'm going to return something different. And what I'm going to return is that number, that number times the factorial times the factorial of 1 less than that number. Now, the reason why this is fascinating and cool and all the rest is I just defined something using that something. So I just defined a function called factorial, and I define it using the definition of the function factorial. It is referring to itself. This is what recursive functions do. But if you think about it, and I'll diagram it out in more detail in the next video, so hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. It should kind of work, because if you put a if you put a one or a zero in for number, it'll just return one. What happens if I if number is two? Well, if number is two, it'll say, look, number is not less than or one, so I'll go over here. So it says it'll return two times factorial of two minus one, or factorial of one, and then it'll call factorial again. And factorial of 1 is just 1. So it'll return 2 times 1. So that'll work out for 2. Try it for 3. If you do factorial of 3, it'll go down to this clause over here, because 3 is not less than or equal to 1. It'll return 3 times the factorial of 3 minus 1, which is 2, the factorial of 2. Well, we know it already returns the right answer for the factorial of 2, so it'll return 3 times 2, which is 6, which is a factorial of 3. So hopefully you're getting the gist of it. Factorial of 4 is going to work for the exact same reason. It's going to boil down to 4 times the factorial of 3. We know that it works for the factorial of 3. And just to prove to you that I'm not doing some type of crazy voodoo and that, that this will actually work, let, let's try to run the program. Let's try to run the program right here. So let's try this is some stuff that I was doing beforehand that let me just get rid of that. So let's just run the program. So all I've done is I've redefined the factorial function, but I've redefined it recursively. So recursively, well, I, I won't have to change the comments. So let me save it and let's let's run, let's e interpret this program. Let's execute it and see if it does what we need it to do. All right. So we and so they're prompting us for something. Let's take the factorial of 5. 120 
And so once again, our factorial program, no matter what we put in there, it gives us the right answer. But what's really cool is it's now doing it recursively. When I do factorial of 6, saying, OK, factorial of 6, is 6 less than or equal to 1? Well, no, it's not. So it goes to this else clause right over here. So then it says, return 6 times the factorial of 5. Then it says, OK, let me remember, 6 times the factorial of 5. Let's figure out what factorial of 5 is. Well, factorial of 5 is going to be 5 times the factorial of 4. And so, and then that factorial of 4 is 4 times the factorial of 3, all the way down to the factorial of 1, which is 1. And so it'll actually return 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1.